I suffer from a, originally a stress-induced psychotic illness. I've had that for 10 years. Basically what it means is I suffer from auditory hallucinations. I hear voices. I used to be an outwardly going, confident individual. Now, I, as a result of my experience, suffer from social anxiety and I have a slight tendency towards paranoia. It's like being tortured and the medication that I take doesn't switch it off either. It, it, it numbs it down, but it's still there. It's a constant presence. I'm a member of the BRC Service User Advisory Group and, and that's a group set up to try and bring service user perspectives on mental health research. I'm involved because I want to see better treatments and I want to see service users given a voice. It has a huge amount of potential to change the way service users are treated by the health service. The reason why we do the sorts of research that we do is of course for patients of the future but I think you've just seen from someone how there are real benefits for patients today to take part in research. One of the things that we're doing in the Biomedical Research Centre is focusing on biomarkers and diagnostic tests right the way across the field. We've had some real successes in autism and in Alzheimer's disease for example. Well, the Biomedical Research Centre is a true collaboration between the South London and Maudsley and King's College London Institute of Psychiatry. There's no doubt, no doubt at all in my mind, that the research that we have done is different over the past four years than it would otherwise have been. And the reason why it's different is because it's patient-focused. And in order to achieve that, we've had a genuine transformation of both organisations that we arose from. We have Biomedical Research Centre funded researchers in many different parts of this very large biomedical campus down at Denmark Hill in South London. We've got proteomics labs, genomics labs, the MRI facility, but right at the core of it is our BRC nucleus where the informatics and the access to electronic medical records takes place. The BRC nucleus is rather like the nucleus in a cell, a centre for informatics. So it's the centre um, for the BRC, it's the, the physical presence of the BRC on the um, SLAM site. The old way of doing research on large amounts of patient information involved collecting paper files and reading through them, something which could take months or even years. In 2006 we introduced an electronic medical system called EPJS. Clinicians now use this on a daily basis to enter information about their patients. The information is stored safely and securely. Now we've developed CRIS, which enables researchers to search the 170,000 entries on EPJS in a matter of seconds. CRIS searches all notes entered by clinicians and anonymizes the patient's details. CRIS is about actually exploiting the information which uh, is routinely collected by clinicians on patients. So you have clinicians writing very rich information into unstructured notes. It's actually very difficult to make use of that unless you have a tool like CRIS. You can search in unstructured fields and identify the sorts of problems you're interested in. Patients have a huge role in determining what the outcome of treatment should be. We've built up a whole range of techniques, infrastructure, methods through which to ensure that patients, service users are fundamentally involved in all stages of mental health research. Our hope is that in the next five years that over half of all the patients within the South London Maudsley Trust are involved in research and this in collaboration with the use of CRIS, for example, I think allows us to move to a new culture of research participation. One of our most important pieces of infrastructure is SHOR, the Service User Research Enterprise. SHOR means that patient involvement is not ad hoc, it's not 
at a token level, it's not simply advisory. It means that salaried service users are employed as researchers and therefore can mean that any research involves service users. I'm a social scientist and I'm also someone who's used mental health services myself for a number of years. Having this dual set of expertise I think brings a really powerful set of insights into what the important questions should be in mental health research. You know, for us, the Biomedical Research Centre is all about partnerships. In many ways, the Institute of Psychiatry, where I am the Dean, and the South London and Maudsley NHS Trust have been partners in research and education for about a hundred years now. But the real partnership and impact of the BRC goes much beyond. We work very closely with the comprehensive Biomedical Research Centre of the Guys and St. Thomas's, but most importantly, we have now started working across London and a good example of that is that in the new Biomedical Research Centre PET imaging will be done in a collaborative fashion across the three academic health science centres of London. We are really fortunate now that our clinical research facility is coming up and to my mind it would be one of the world's few places that was built with mental health and neuroscience trials in mind. The CRF is right at the heart of our Denmark Hill campus and what is beautiful is that it actually straddles the SLAM NHS Foundation which is a mental health trust and the King's College Hospital which is a regular medical trust thereby providing us the expertise not only in psychiatry but also in the related medical disciplines. It is really a marvelous facility. We have a special MRI, we have EEG facilities, we have behavioral observation rooms, we have virtual reality facilities, all within a CRF. A bonus of working in an environment such as this is that we have the world on our doorsteps, so we have a very rich, diverse population that we're working for. I think culture, I think people's socio-economic backgrounds, the way that they live their lives, I think all of those have an impact on their mental health. As a consequence of that, the research that we carry out and the interventions that we would want to develop have a diversity as well. Well, one of the bold ambitions that the Trust has is to involve up to 80% of our clinical staff in research in the next five years. So that means that direct clinical staff will have a real say and a real impact and bring their expertise onto patient care. I think our strength is the fact that we have so much face-to-face -face time with, with patients and so we hear their stories, we hear about the challenges, we hear about the things that are perhaps stopping them from moving on with their lives and so we're in a key position to be able to develop interventions that will target those. I think we've really transformed our organisations. We are now really achieving on translational research. The next phase for us is to follow through from that and to really bring experimental medicine to psychiatry, to bring the benefits of molecular experimental medicine to mental health. If we can do that, we can transform patients' lives. I think Henry Maudsley would be absolutely delighted. I think what we're doing through the Biomedical Research Centre is bringing together the academic institution together with the hospital. I think we've achieved Maudsley's vision in the molecular age.